Welcome to Shibuso Math Physics. In today's video, we are going to be looking at Bernoulli Principle. What exactly is Bernoulli Principle? So in this video, we are going to be covering Bernoulli Principle, Bernoulli Principle's formula. We are also going to look at the Bernoulli Equation Derivation. We are looking at the principles of continuity. We are also going to look at the Bernoulli Principle use. We are going to relate between conservation of energy and the Bernoulli equation. What exactly is Bernoulli equation at constant depth? We are also going to look at the Bernoulli equation for static fluid. We are also looking at the Bernoulli principle example and then we are going to conclude this video by looking at some frequently asked questions on Bernoulli principle. So what exactly is Bernoulli principle? Bernoulli principle states that an increase in the speed of a fluid occurs simultaneously with a decrease in the pressure of a or a decrease in the fluid potential energy. So what exactly are we talking about when we say that uh, an increase in the speed of a fluid occurs simultaneously? What we meant is that uh, according to Bernoulli principle, uh, the total mechanical energy of uh, the moving fluid comprising the gravitational potential energy of elevation. So the energy associated with the fluid pressure, uh, the energy associated with the fluid pressure and the kinetic energy of that fluid motion will remain constant. That's what Bernoulli principle tried to explain. That an increase in the speed of a fluid occurs simultaneously. So there is a simultaneous occurrence with a decrease in the pressure or a decrease in the fluid potential energy. So if you uh, convert this mathematically, you will simply say that the total mechanical energy of the moving fluid comprising the gravitational potential energy of elevation, that is the energy associated with the fluid potential or the fluid pressure and the kinetical energy of the fluid motion will always be constant. Uh, let us see mathematically what, how we can express uh, this principle uh, in terms of mathematical expression, the formula of uh, Bernoulli principle. So let us look at uh, the Bernoulli principle formula. Bernoulli principle formula or Bernoulli equation formula is a relation uh, between pressure. So we are going to have pressure. It is a relation between pressure. Uh, we have pressure, then we have kinetic energy. We have kinetic energy. And then we have the gravitational energy. We have the gravitational energy. Of course, this is gravitational potential energy. Uh, these are the three things that we need uh, when we talk about uh, Bernoulli principle. So the principle says that P uh, plus a, a half uh, PV squared, PV squared plus uh, PGH will be K, uh, which means constant. It means constant. So P in this case is the pressure exerted by the fluid. V, in this case, is the velocity, uh, the velocity of the fluid. And then we have rho. Rho here, in this case, is the density of the fluid. And H is the height of the container. So we talk about Bernoulli's equation to give a great insight into the balance between the pressure, velocity, and that of elevation. So that's exactly what we mean uh, by this formula. Now you can pay attention so that I explain to you uh, how we can relate this formula 
uh, to use it to explain the principle of conservation of energy. So this uh, prayer, this formula can as well be uh, written in the form of P1. Let's say this is P1 uh, plus a half uh, PV, PV, but in this case PV1 squared uh, plus uh, then we have PGH. This is raw, is not P, it is called raw. Uh, GH GH1 so this is equal to uh, P2 let's say P2 uh, plus a half uh, then we have uh, PV2 squared then we will have uh, uh, plus our raw uh, GH GH2 uh, so what we simply mean here is that uh, this P1 will be equal to P2 because it is constant. It is constant. Half PV squared will be equal to half PV uh, squared. That is the second velocity. So it is constant. This is exactly what we mean. Uh, P1 in this case will be the pressure of uh, the pressure energy. We call this the pressure energy uh, this is the pressure energy uh, then we have uh, the PV uh, squared this PV squared will be the kinetic energy this is the kinetic uh, energy kinetic energy per unit volume so this is kinetic energy per unit uh, volume by unit uh, volume and then we have the P in this case PGH will be the potential energy uh, this is the potential uh, potential energy potential energy per unit in this case it is per unit volume as well per unit uh, volume but this is kinetic and this is potential energy and this will bring us to uh, uh, V1 in this case uh, when we talk about V1 we have V1 and then we have V2 uh, V1 will show us the flow of velocity and uh, V2 will also continue to show us the flow of velocity so you have V1 and then we have V2 we also have uh, a, a1 and then we have a2 in this case uh, we also have p1 and then we have p2 so a1 uh, let's say a2 will be uh, less than a1 why v2 will be greater than v v1 and then p2 P2 will be less than uh, P1. So this is exactly what we mean when we try to explain Bernoulli principle. Of course, you will understand this more when we dive into computation. But it's good to pay attention to these uh, few ones to, uh, in order to know what exactly is Bernoulli principle and how can uh, we relate this Bernoulli principle to our day-to-day activities so let us see uh, if we want to derive this equation the equation of binary principle but before we derive the equation of the binary principle let us look at the assumptions what are the assumptions of binary principle the first assumptions of binary is that the density of the incompressible fluid remain constant at both points so we will look at the density we look at the density
outside or at good point. So the density of the incompressible fluid remains constant at both side or at both point. This is one of the assumptions of Pinoli. The second assumption is that the energy of the fluid is conserved as there are no vicious forces in the fluid. So we said that the energy So what exactly we mean by this assumption is that the work done on the fluid will be given by the change of that work, delta W, uh, will be equal to the first force exerted, F1, uh, Vx1, minus uh, F2, Dx2. This means that uh, the work done, uh, delta W, will be uh, uh, P1, this is P1, uh, A1, A1, then DX1, uh, minus P2, A2, A2, then DX2, DX2. Therefore, the work done, delta W, will be given by uh, P1 dV, uh, minus P2 dV, dV, uh, this will be equal to P, uh, this can P1 minus P2, P1 minus P2 into dV. Uh, so we know that uh, the work done on the fluid was due to the conservation of a change in the gravitational potential energy uh, and the change in the kinetic energy. So therefore, the change in the kinetic energy of the fluid will therefore be given by dK. Uh, Vk in this case will be equal to the half uh, m, m2 uh, v2 squared v2 squared minus a half m1 m1 we have m1 now uh, v1 squared uh, this will be equals to a half uh, pdv pdv uh, in this case we are going to have if we factor out this we have v squared uh, minus v1 squared so this will be the change in kinetic energy of the fluid. So the change in potential energy now will be given by, the change in potential energy now will be given by uh, VU. VU in this case will be equal to the M. Uh, we have M2G. Uh, in this case, it's GY1. Then we have uh, this minus uh, m in this case it is m1 this is m2 this is m uh, m1 uh, g y2 g y2 uh, if we try to factor out this if we try to factor out this we simply have a uh, pdv pdvg uh, in this case we will have y2 minus y1 so you will understand this more when we dive into computation and uh, we are going to continue this computation in the next video i remain your friend augustine galagash <laughs>